Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to create simple game characters using basic shapes and a process that can be replicated in pretty much any other vector design tool. I start by creating my basic shapes. We have a rectangle with rounded corners, turning it into a pill shape. One with rounded corners that are a little less rounded. I add a simple circle and another pill that I convert to a path and delete the top node so I just get half a pill shape. These will be my basic shapes to create the characters. I'll work with them and duplicate them rather than create them new each and every time. I just find it faster to use the duplicate rather than creating the shapes from scratch. I use a big pill shape for the body and add a smaller one for the face. I duplicate the half pill and scale it up to match the body as a shield. I duplicate it again, mirror it and widen it to use as the helmet. Seeing I'm working with very simple shapes, there are very few nodes. So in this case I just need to move the bottom two nodes upwards. I duplicate the circle, color it black, duplicate it again and I have my two eyes. I duplicate the shield to make it the beard and place it below the helmet, face and eyes. To add some detail to the helmet, I duplicate the pill, scale it down, give it the color of the helmet. For this process I have turned the snapping off. It sometimes makes it a lot harder to move things by small margins. So in order to align the eyes properly I just go in and use the alignment panel. I use another pill shape for the legs. In this case I create the legs as two parts, the upper and the lower limb. It makes it easier to animate walk cycles with two parts of a leg. The character will be able to bend the knees which does look nicer unless the character appears really small in the game. It is worth the extra effort to give him a smooth walk. I repeat the process for the arms, duplicating the face and turning it into the upper and the lower arm. When creating a whole bunch of characters for a game I try to keep the setup pretty much consistent. That way it's a lot easier to exchange artwork for different characters in the animation tool later on. I continue duplicating parts, moving them, rotating them, scaling them to place them where I need them so the upper right arm becomes the upper left arm and the helmet becomes a shoulder pad. I find an animation easier to read when the body parts that are behind the body are slightly darker than those in front. So I colored the lower and upper arm as well as the legs slightly darker than their counterparts. For the sword I work with the rounded rectangle that also makes up the hand. In Inkscape the curvature will be scaled along with the shape. So sometimes you need to go in with the node tool and adjust the curves to avoid the corners being deformed. For the blade we want to do exactly that. I turn the blade into a path and adjust the top 
to be pointy rather than round. I also add two center nodes, that way I can cut the shape in half to have one lighter and one darker side of the blade. When creating objects that will be used with the character, like the sword, or a gun, or a spear, it is always easier to create them in a horizontal or vertical alignment and then rotate them into place later on, it's a lot harder to work on an odd angle. Especially with small characters, it's important to keep the character readable, so elements with the same color that are not the same thing should be colored slightly differently to make them stand out. In this case, the sword needed to be differentiated from the wristband. I add a shadow shape as it helps ground the character to whatever he stands on. It's always nice to work on a big monitor with high res art, but quite often the game art is a lot smaller, so just to see how my character looks, I duplicate all the elements and scale him down to get an idea. This is pretty plain, so let's add a little bit more light and shadow. I already started with the sword, so the other elements could probably do with a little bit of a highlight. I create a straight line, give it a slightly wider stroke. The advantage of the plain line is it's easy to modify, I just have two nodes. I place it and use the node tool to adjust the curve. It's easy to adjust the widths as well. I try to keep those highlight shapes relatively consistent so you don't have really, really fine lines because they don't go with this kind of design. So I want to have them a little bolder. And in order to get the colors right, I change the blend mode from normal to overlay. To shape the helmet, I duplicate the half pill shape, cut it, and set the original shape to a clipping group. I also cut the highlights as I want to place them inside that clipping group. I go into the layer panel, select my helmet, and select the clip and paste those new objects above the clip. I repeat the process for the shield, making the base shape a clipping group and pasting the smaller colored element inside. This way I can just create a black shape with opacity as a shading element and place it inside that clipping group. While I'm combining the elements, I might as well just take the face, the beard and the eyes and place them inside the body in order to allow me to add a shading element that is cast by the helmet.
that's the shaded version done let's see how that holds up in a smaller size I duplicate everything group it and scale it down roughly to the size of the previous version and the highlight strokes that look massive on the big design now become really thin lines let's try a little change the two pills for the legs might be useful but a curved line might just look more elegant if you do changes like this keep your animation tool in mind because you want to be able to animate properly afterwards as i mentioned before two parts for the limbs usually make for a smooth animation for a still image it might look better to use a stroke not quite that thick a little less and again i'm gonna color one side a little darker keep the layer stacking in mind so that those elements that should be behind the body are actually behind the body and that's a little night using basic shapes done the great advantage of working with vectors is it's so easy to create variations from simply arranging the sword and the shield differently to swapping the sword for a spear or the helmet for a horned viking helmet i had way too much fun with this and got a little carried away adding a skeleton again pill shapes circles more pill shapes for the teeth as well as some new weapons and before i knew it i had filled the page one of the tricky elements with most character designs are the hands for something this small you can cut some corners i use the pill shapes for the arms and in order to add fingers now i use the line i created earlier give the stroke the same color as the skin and it's very easy to manipulate seeing it only consists of two notes when working on small and cute characters i usually skip a finger rather than give them five i stick with just three fingers and some the lines make it real easy to adjust either different finger positions or more chubby hands with shorter fingers In Inkscape the lines scale automatically if I use the normal selection tool. So I move the top nodes and manipulate the fingers by using the node tool. That way the stroke width is not changed. I created a tutorial on hands a while back. So if you want to play around with it some more, have a look at my blog. Let me show you a quick sample of recycling your designs. I'm creating a simple gun using the basic shapes that I created for the characters and turning that from a pump gun into something more modern looking. When exporting an element like the pump gun, keep in mind that some parts move, you want to export them as separate shapes.
by simply moving some of the elements around, adding a few new ones. The old fashioned pump gun turned into something slightly different in pretty much no time. Use your base design, duplicate it, alter it, play around with different colors, different styles, add a few new elements, reuse them and in no time you have created a vast array of assets based on a very simple initial design. Just keep in mind that it's always easier to start simple and add as you go than try something very complex and complicated. I won't be covering animation in this video but here's a quick word on exporting your art for animation. Make sure you got the size right it's a lot easier to export in the right size. Keep your elements separate. Align your elements vertically or horizontally. Angled bits make it harder to animate later on. You will reposition them in the tool of your choice. The quality of your pixel image is just better when you have straight lines. Angles and pixels don't work quite that well. Think about your animation before you start creating your character. What will the character be able to do? And what parts of the body will be animated? In the initial design, I didn't create a lower left arm or a lower left hand. For the export, it would make sense to properly explode the character and give him all the possible parts. As you can see with the hand I stuffed up, it was still part of the sword group. Make sure that all the elements are separate. Group them if there is more elements like in the sword. I would split the leg just for the reasons I mentioned earlier. It is easier to animate a lower and a upper limb to make knees bend. I split the curve by adding an extra node, breaking it apart and ending up with two shorter curves. These would be my elements to export for animating the knight, which will be another video coming very soon. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and a comment in the section below. Let me know what you want to see on this channel or on my blog and I'll see you again soon.